Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for zooming in. I would like to present our latest work on metal forming and lubrication flow during metal forming processes with the title, A Weekly Coupled Fluid Solid Interaction Approach for Hydrostatic Pressure Buildup in Metal Processing. My name is Maximilian Zwicker. I'm a PhD student here at the Technical University of Denmark in the metal forming and tribology and joining research group. Before diving right into my presentation, I would like to thank Professor Callens and his team for organizing this conference. If we consider metal forming, we will see that we find metal parts almost everywhere. Automotive industry, aerospace industry, healthcare industry, everywhere. And those metal parts are either from the field of bulk metal forming or from the field of sheet metal forming. But what happens if we deform them? If we deform them, there is a yeah, not to say mismatch, but there is a difference between the macroscopic deformation and the deformation at the microscopic level. So if we, for example, look at this rather simple upsetting of a cylinder, um, we do see that we compress the cylinder, it gets a little bit wider, but flatter. So what is actually happening at the microscopic surface? Well, at the beginning, we have the yeah, rather rough surface under the microscope where we see some peaks, which we call asperities, and where we see some valleys. And those asperities are flattened throughout the deformation process. In order to uh, reduce friction between the tool and the workpiece, we would usually apply um, lubrication. Um, today, I would like to talk about liquid lubrication only. And if I apply li liquid lubrication to such a surface, we will see something like this, which is called the mixed lubrication regime. So the oil will basically fill, fill out all the valleys. They will be full of oil. And we still have the asperities, which will be in direct contact to the tool that will then be metal to metal contact. Um, in the mixed lubrication regime, throughout the process, it can happen that actually between the tool and the workpiece, there is not enough lubricant. And that is then called lubrication breakdown or the breakdown of the lubricant film. And that is highly undesirable because that means that the metal and the metal are in direct contact. And what we may experience is cold welding of the workpiece material and the tool material. And since the workpiece material is in most cases substantially softer, then the tool, we will basically tear off workpiece material, which will then be missing at the workpiece, but adhered to the tool surface. And that requires um, expensive cleaning. We have damage to our workpiece, and that is really not desirable. There are two ways to prevent uh, lubrication breakdown. One is chemically adhering lubricants, which are chemically adhered to the surfaces. Therefore, they tend to break down less. Um, those, however, require expensive cleaning because they are chemically adhered to the surface. Um, and in some cases, they are also hazardous. And that is, again, undesirable. However, we could also use frictional effects. Um, and here we basically would use two effects, which are called hydrostatic lubrication or hydrodynamic lubrication. What are those? Hydrostatic lubrication is if we no move, if we think again about our um, mixed lubrication regime, and we start moving our surfaces towards each other. That means we are sort of squeezing the oil in between the valleys. This oil will build up a hydrostatic pressure, and at some point, if the ceiling pressure to the left and to the right of a pocket here in 2D will exceed will, or will be lower than the hydrostatic pressure, then this oil will be squeezed out. We're going to look at this today a little bit closer. Um, there is also a hydrodynamic lubrication effect. This is essentially the case if we start moving the surfaces relative to each other, basically glide them. Um, and here we have, we see similar effects to um, for example, hydrodynamic bearings. But how could one incorporate something like this into a process and avoid lubrication breakdown? This can be seen relatively easy um, on this slide. So let's assume uh, 
sheet process. As we see to the left, we have a sheet and we thin it throughout the process. The sheet is in contact with the tool at either side. So at one of the sides, we have an initial lubricant layer, which at some point of the process tends to have a layer breakdown of the lubricant. That means we will experience higher friction and subsequently maybe even wear this location. So what could we do? We could now add an artificial lubricant pocket, an artificial surface feature, which acts as a lubricant reservoir. So in this case, it is maybe only a notch, and this notch is filled with oil. If we now go ahead and start thinning our sheet as we did before, we will see that at some point the oil being trapped in that notch will be squeezed out due to the hydrostatic pressure which appears in the notch due to the thinning of the sheet. And this squeezed out oil will relubricate the surface. And that is a very desirable way of relubrication and avoiding lubrication breakdown. So why is that not applied everywhere in industry already? Well, the determination of this lubricant flow in by means of simulations is fairly challenging. And that is a reason why we decided to develop a model which can that which can do that a little bit more accurate. Before I'm going to talk about the simulations themselves, I would like to talk about our validation case, which are experiments which were conducted by our co-worker Dr. Suleiman et al. Um, and what they did essentially was they took simple cylinders, 20 times 20 millimeters, and added a lubricant pocket at the top. And here we actually have a nice uh, simulation case where we have pressure build up, we have solid deformation, and that is a good start to validate a model. And it is also one nice aspect is also that we have uh, hydrostatic pressure, which means that the pressure will be the same everywhere. So it is actually simple to validate whether or not the fluid solver is doing a good job. So what we see is that they basically started compressing those pockets with and without oil, without oil. Well, it is flattened entirely with oil. Um, the pocket is kept open. So that means that with oil, what we would see in a real farming process with oil, we would see less um, flattening of the asperities, meaning also less friction. So when we started simulating this, we first of all decided to split the simulations of the solid and the fluid. Why, why would we do that? Well, the reason is that the solid is relatively stiff and the fluid is substantially less stiff than the solid in comparison. And that causes problems in your metrics when you solve them. And a simple way is that just to weakly couple them and go to extremely small time steps because you simulate the solid, then the liquid, then the solid, then the liquid. So you have uh, this um, weak, weak coupling. Well, so what did we do? We basically deform in iForm2 I formed the software existed already in the 90s, so before the iPhone. Um, in an in-house FEM solver, we simulate basically the lowering of the tool. So we basically lower our upper die. Then we take the displacement of the interface, which is here marked in red. This is the interface of the lubricant pocket. This interface movement is now put into the CFD solver. The CFD solver basically um, compresses the fluid domain. This creates a pressure, a hydrostatic pressure in the fluid domain, which we then put as a pressure boundary condition along the red interface in the solid simulations. So basically, we deform the, the solid, we deform the fluid, and then we transfer either the interface movement or the pressure along the interface. For the SOLIX mechanics module, module for the metal flow, we used our in-house FEM code um, iForm, which is built upon the irreducible uh, finite element flow formulation, which is very neat because it is driven by velocities and pressures since we consider the metal to be rather a, a, a very high viscous fluid than a solid. Um, and this comes in very handy if we're looking at our, FEM, at our CFD solver, because 
our commercial FEM code, which solves the, uh, the compressible memory Stokes equations, is also built upon, or is also driven by velocities and pressures, and that makes the communication seamless. Both were simulated in axisymmetric 2D simulations. The billets, they were made of aluminum 1050, where we have a flow stress curve, which is nice because I can plug that directly into my simulations. In, or in order to get experimental data um, of our oil, what basically was done, the oil was taken, poured into a pressure chamber and then compressed. And then one can derive a pressure dependent density where we can derive a function which we can then plug into our fluid solver. And this leaves us with having everything defined. We have a flow stress curve of the metal, we have a, a pressure dependent density of the fluid, and we, have, we know the friction because there's a Teflon sheet. I jumped up, 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 across this, but there's a Teflon sheet between the lower die and the workpiece. So we have no clue about the friction between uh, the upper die and the workpiece, which is, which is essentially along this red line. So we conducted a sensitivity analysis, analysis and varied the coefficient of friction. What we see at 60% reduction, that they are relatively similar. At 27% reduction, we see the similar trend. However, at 56% reduction, we see that if the friction coefficient is too, too low, the billet glides, or the upper corner, the upper edge glides too far out. And if the friction is too, too high, the metal can't glide far enough. And we found that 0.18 is right on spot. So with the friction factor of 0.18, just to show it again, we have simulated um, the case. Here we see 16 and 27% reduction. Here we see 56% reduction, reduction and the load displacement curve, which is also um, matching the experimental results quite nicely. To conclude, we have a good agreement with the experimental results when applying a fluid solver to the oil domain, which leaves us with the conclusion that we can take the next steps, namely simulating um, dynamic, having dynamic pockets simulated, applying uh, basically friction characterization tests uh, to the same setup and simulating um, the same simulation with a known friction factor at the top. And maybe, hopefully, in the long run, simulating tailored surfaces um, with lubricant pockets to optimize processes. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to receive some questions.